-hmm. So we're recording, let's begin. So yeah, I want to speak um, briefly about um, sweet potatoes. So it's something I've spoken about before, but it's a plant I really love. And um, yeah, so thinking about like resilience and um, growing food, it's something that I think is really beautiful in terms of being able to grow a staple food that's very healthy, that's very nutrient dense, that for an annual crop in most of our climates is fairly um, low energy. It's a really nice crop that you can integrate into a forest garden at the beginning before the canopy closes when you've got more space. Um, so basically you've got these wonderful tubers. So we're growing, where should I put it here? We've got orange ones, which are, tend to be more kind of bulbous. And then we've got purple ones, which tend to be uh, a bit longer. Um, and so, yeah, they're not actually related to potatoes. They're from the same family as, um, as Morning Glory. So it's Ipanema uh, batatas. And because of that, not being part of the nightshade family, it's avoiding some of the problems that people have with the digestion, with spiking your blood sugar. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it's a really nice crop to grow. So I want to just do an experiment here. Let's see if I can do a live demonstration with this because I've got a lot of them growing at the moment. So once you've got them in the garden, they're fairly easy uh, to take care of. It's a little bit more complicated in the beginning, um, but I think it's really worth it. So let's see if I can show here into my pot. So I've shown these kind of ones before that are fairly um, average size. When you're propagating them, you want to take something about that size. So if you compare that to my hand, it's about the same size as my hand and it's like fairly thin, like a couple of fingers. Um, so unlike the normal white potatoes, you don't want to cut up your tubers because they can tend to go moldy. So what you want to do is you want to use a long tuber. I'm not sure how well you're gonna be able to see here, but in this pot, I've got some tubers which are in the soil. So they're like half submerged in the soil and the top of them is outwards. And as you can see, these shoots here are what are starting to grow from the tubers. Um, so unlike uh, normal potatoes, where you would put like a whole one or a piece in the ground directly and it would start to grow. In this case, what you do is you put the, the tuber in and it will start making these shoots. So usually they'll start like this, like quite small. Um, you can see here, these are the kind of like earliest ones. Tell me if you can't see anything. Hopefully it's clear what I'm showing. Um, so here are the earliest ones. They come up like these little purple shoots and then they start to have these green leaves and then they start to get very tall. So I've left some of these so that I can show the kind of process. So what you want to do is you want to wait till they're about kind of this length. And then you go down to the ground to where they start coming out from the tuber. And then you want to try and like break them off basically. Like that. So you can see now you've got like the whole um, plant. And you can see here where it's, it was joined to the tuber. I don't know how well you can see that. But you can see here where it was joined to the tuber. And then there are like various different ways you can continue after that. So one way is that you can put it in water and you can root it. So you can put it in a glass of water and it will start to grow roots. And when the roots are kind of about that long, you can plant it. But what we found is just easier is you can just take it off like this. And if you've got it in a good draining soil, then you can just plant it like that and then it will start to root itself. So usually what we do is we have some of these long containers with the different um, tubers in them. And then once we break off the shoots, we move them to a different container and then we start growing those. And because it's a tropical plant, it needs to be planted out after your last frost. 
we start them quite early because then what you can do is once you've got them like this, they continue growing. So they root and continue growing. And then you end up, you can see like this one's pretty long. It's like longer than my hand span already. And then what you can do is, I don't know how well you can see this, but just below like a leaf node, so here where you've got like a leaf coming out, you can break off the plant. So let's see, let's do it like a bit further down here. You can break it off like this. So you've got something that long and then you can take off the lower leaf and then you have something like this and then you can also plant that as well. And so you can keep doing that and then the one that's underneath will grow like a new growing head and will get bigger. So yeah, you can keep planting them and then as they're growing, cutting them and making more plants. So although it might seem wasteful to have um, a whole uh, tuber to begin with in the soil, you're actually harvesting a lot of things out of it. You're getting like many, many, many plants. Um, so usually like last year we had maybe four of these containers, like two with the orange tubers and two with the purple tubers. And we planted an area that was maybe, hmm, I don't know how long it was, but yeah, we got about how much? Let's say a hundred square meters, says my assistant, who's better at remembering numbers than me. So like a hundred square meters. And from that, we got about 80 kilograms of uh, tubers for eating at the end. Um, and then additional to that, we also got a leaf crop. So you can see here, they've got these like very beautiful, juicy leaves and the leaves are edible. They become like a darker green as they mature and they get very big. Um, and they have that beautiful like heart shape like you probably know from uh, Morning Glory. And the leaves are also very nutritious. Um, you have to kind of do a balance because obviously the leaves are photosynthesizing and helping for the tuber to grow. But usually if you've got like a big patch, you can take a few leaves here and there and you can eat them raw. They've got a kind of a little bit kind of some people say a bit of a soapy taste um, and you can also like steam them and cook them. They're also very good in um, in ferment. So you can lacto ferment them um, and then, yeah, the tubers. You can also yeah, cook them in a lot of ways. And yeah, they're very beautiful. You can see like the orange ones that you usually get in the shop. And I don't know if you can see that so well, but it has this like beautiful purple color to it. Um, so those have got lots of really lovely phytochemicals in them. So basically, yeah, the next step is once you've got all these little plants, um, you want to wait till your last frost rate, and then you want to plant them out. And what we've seen in terms of the pattern of how they're growing is they kind of grow down like a kind of hand, like fingers stuck into the soil. So they don't tend to spread out so much like the white potatoes. Um, and what that means is you can actually plant them like fairly close together. So we did some experiments. We had some that were about like 30 centimeters apart and we had some that were further apart. And we found that about 30 centimeters apart from where you plant them is pretty good. And then what they do is they just spread all over the ground. So unlike white potatoes, you don't need to earth them up. Um, and you don't really need to weed between them or to put a lot of mulch down if you don't have a lot of mulch material because they're self mulching. So the vines will grow like all over the ground and make this very beautiful ground cover. Um, and then, yeah, you basically just water them. Um, if you're in England where there's quite well distributed rain, yeah, you might not even have to water them that much. Um, where we are in Bulgaria, it's like pretty dry summers but we did like a deep watering about once a week and that was fine. Um, and then, yeah, they're quite a long season plant. So we got them out in, let's say, May. Um, and then we harvested them in about October. Um, so I think that's one of the difficulties in um, the UK um, is about having a long enough season and enough sunshine. 
So it is something you can start earlier. So you've got like good, strong plants ready to put out. Um, and you can also do like some kind of protection over the small plants in the beginning if you're worried about kind of freak kind of last frosts. Um, and the same at the end of the season, you can also put something over them. But there you can have kind of first frost, which would kill off the, the greens, the top growth, but the tubers would still be okay until you have a heavy frost. So I think one of the main tricks is planting them early enough so you've got enough uh, growing time for them um, because, yeah, they do need that long season. So I think, yeah, they probably grow the best in like continental climate. Um, but I think, yeah, there are people growing them successfully in the UK and in more kind of northwestern Europe. Um, yeah, so Rakesh was like giving a comment um, about it's quite hard to find a tuber. Actually, these ones that we're growing now, we found the tuber first when we went to the UK because we were eating a lot of them because they're like sold everywhere and they're not such a popular commercial crop in Bulgaria. So one of the things that we noticed is it's worth going to a place that sells organic vegetables and getting an organic tuber. Um, because someone said that the non-organic ones, they've been sprayed with um, like fungicide chemicals and chemicals to stop them um, like uh, making shoots. So I'm not sure yet if it's like that, but we didn't have success with the non-organic ones. And when we got an organic one, it went really well. Um, so yeah, I think it's something worth experimenting with. And I think yeah, when you plant them as well to avoid the, the, the tuber rotting in the first place, it's really worth having a well drained soil. Um, like always, yeah, when you're making seedlings and starts, it's worth having a well drained soil because they've got very delicate roots at the beginning. But especially with this, because what you'll find as well is if you have both kinds, um, the purple ones tend to sprout really quickly and the orange ones take a bit longer. So they're gonna be sitting for a while in the soil. Okay, so I'm pretty much at the end of this time. We're gonna have a break in a second, but are there any quick questions that people wanted to ask before we finish? When you say start early, how early is early? Because I mean, um, I wouldn't have started mine by now and you, yours are already shooting. Yeah, well, we found after kind of experimenting, this is the third year that we've been growing them um, because we've got a big area and we're going to be growing more this year in our community garden. Um, we've started this early because then, because you can keep multiplying them by trimming them um, from this small amount of tubers and kind of the small amount of space that it needs in the house. We can then move to the next stage um, of having a lot of them. So they'll be kind of ready and strong and we can keep chopping them down and multiplying them. I think if you want to grow a, sh a smaller amount, um, you can start like the end of February or something. Um, but because especially the orange ones take a long time to get started, um, like we planted these uh, purple and orange ones at the same time. And the orange ones have got like just the very smallest shoots coming up, whereas these have already, we're already chopping them and multiplying them. So yeah, like you can, you can do it in February as well. We've mainly done this because we're preparing to have a lot of plants for a community garden. Yeah, I mean, I totally agree. Sometimes it can take two months before that you even start shooting. It's really, um, yeah, it can be really slow. To get yeah. There. And I mean, that's what we wanted to avoid because the first year we did them quite early before we came to visit in England. We planted them and when we came back to Bulgaria, they were already shooting. And then the next year we did them a bit later. We were like, oh, that was really early. And then we didn't get around to doing them until like the beginning of March. But then, yeah, we didn't have them like ready in time for when we wanted to start planting out the community garden. And yeah, it's just like, because they're quite a long season crop, it's quite good to have them ready. Um, and then because we're doing other things later on in the spring, now's a good time to kind of get them started and give them some attention. Cool, thanks. Any other quick questions before we take a break? 
Wonderful. Okay, I'll stop the recording in that case. Great. And yeah, somewhere in the archives, there's another presentation I've given talking a bit more about the kind of nutritional value and some of the details of sweet potatoes. But yeah, that's a really lovely crop. And yeah, if you find an organic sweet potato, you can experiment and see what happens. Yeah, quite often what you find in Asia is many people grow it more for its actual greens. Yeah. So for, for the actual leaf. And so they'll have one tub that is just continuously, continuously just leaves. And so you're just continuously every day or, you know, um, several times a week, just eating greens from that, that one, one plant or that one set of plants that's in, in one particular container. And it's, uh, yeah, it's a really, really, really productive plant. So really well worth um, having a go. Well done. Thanks very much, Sophie. Brilliant stuff. You're welcome. Okay, so we're now going to have a break and